Hey guys, in today's video, we will discuss the best six products and what you should look for before purchasing a new one. We have ranked these products according to their performance, price, durability, and more. Please head over to the description to know more about it and its latest pricing if you want to know more. Panasonic Lumix GH6 While it's relatively inexpensive for a camera of this caliber, the Panasonic Lumix GX6 is pricier than others on this list, and for a good reason. It's articulating touchscreens paired, top-notch image stabilization, and features are useful for creating cinematic professional contents. You also get unlimited video recordings to me a feature few cameras offer. It can capture high-quality audios, either via the camera's built-in microphones or an optional external microphone. Whether you're shooting in bright sunlights, using artificial lights, or you're stuck filming in dimly lit conditions, this camera can easily handle it. In addition to, in addition to the 3.7 million dot OLED electronics viewfinder, the camera has a rear 3-inch touchscreen to frame your shots and control camera functions. You can use this camera anywhere since the body is weather sealed and mild water exposure won't harm the camera. The camera has both CF Express Type B and SD UHS 2 memory card slots, a terrific choice for capturing both video and stills. The Panasonic Lumix G86 has a wide selection of lenses available to help you achieve your creative vision. Olympus OM DE Mark V Mark III. There's a lot of technologies built into this camera and a lot of feature. The EM5 Mark III is lighter than the predecessors, and yet its weather-sealed construction mean it's dust, splash, and freeze-proof. The autofocus systems doesn't have the most AF point, but the 121 phase detections on sensors' AF points are all cross-type and covers most of the sensor areas. It also has a new and improved image stabilization system offering up to 5.5 EV shake compensation or 6.5 EV with one of Olympus's stabilized lenses. The OMD EM5 Mark III is quite light, though if you fit the Olympus Pro's 12 to 40 millimeter lens typically supplied with this camera as a kit. The four-way rear controller is small but effective enough, and an OK button in the center activates a handy interactive touch-sensitive setting screen. The rear screen is a fully vary angle type, not just a tilting screen, so you can easily flip it around to face forward. And while the EFV isn't the highest resolution, but it still has a creditable 2.36 million dot. It's an OLED types with great clarity and contrast. Olympus has packed a lot of technologies into a very small and affordable camera body, and some clever and genuinely useful long exposures and focus bracketing option too. Be aware of this camera size. It may be a little larger than the smallest entry-lover mirrorless camera, but it has features and capabilities you won't find all in the same place, even with the top enthusiast DSLRs and mirrorless models. And while the 20 megapixel sensor is at a numerical disadvantage compared to most APS-C sensors, you're unlikely to see much difference in real-world shooting. Fujifilm X S10 there's a lot to love about Fujifilm's X-S10 mirrorless camera in terms of technical specifications. It's one of the strongest video cameras in this price point category. The Fujifilm X-S10 mirrorless camera packs 26.1 megapixel, which is formidable for its price tag. In fact, it offers the same number of effective pixels as X-T4, its slightly more expensive brother. In terms of FOV, its zoom range leaves ample room for improvement, but that shouldn't be too big of a concern if you're mainly going to use it for vlogging. It packs the U.S. Vibration Sensor Cleaning System, which is one of the better ones, given that sensors are fairly delicate, no matter how well built they are. This feature simplifies the maintenance process while increasing Fujifilm XS10's longevity. It is built upon the image sensor shift mechanism with 5-axis compensation. The 3-inch vary angle touchscreen is another interesting feature, sporting roughly 1.4 million dots and presenting filmmakers, videographers, and content creators with a convenient tool that governs Fujifilm X-S10's fundamental features. The bottom line is that Fujifilm X-S10 is an essential piece of gear that all expert videographers could use to up their game. Its handling is awesome, fairly lightweight, 
and with such robust specifications, it's truly amazing that it doesn't belong to our higher price category. Panasonic Lumix S5 This camera is another Panasonic classic, and it was impressive how robust and functional the Lumix S5 has turned out to be for vloggers. The camera offers some high-end features that give its competitors a run for the money. First off, Lumix S5 comes with a sensor size that is four times larger than that offered by GH5 II. Not to forget that there isn't any noticeable difference in size between the two, but its sensor is not the only feature making it a winner. Fans of the company's earlier releases will find that Lumix S5 boasts much of their typical powerful features in one of the most compact sizes. In contrast to Lumix S1, Lumix S5 offers the same 24-megapixel CMOS sensor but with greater portability and improved contrast. The camera is also incredibly weather-resistant and offers 6.5 stops of image stabilization, ensuring camera shake-related problems never occur again. Furthermore, there's a 4K recording and a 96-megapixel high-resolution RAW plus JPEG capture. Whether you want to lock out into objects at far or short distances, the wide FOV of Lumix S5 ensures that your shots are accurate. Lumix S5 camera is an undeniable choice for those looking for a mix of great value and quality, especially people making movies, shooting still life, and vloggers that could benefit from a bit of both. Sony A6400 Sony continues pushing back the boundaries of processing and autofocus performances, bringing out new technologies in its flagship professional cameras and filtering these down through the ranges to its consumer model. So indeed, the A6400 has inherited the autofocus of the full-frame A9, A7R3, and A7 III model, boasting 425 phase detections, 425 contrast autofocus points, and what Sony claims the world's fastest autofocus acquisition time of 0.02 seconds. It's interesting to compare the A6400 side by side with the original A6000s, launched way back at dawn. The A6400 has been plumped out a bit around the middles, thanks to the new 180 degree tilting screens on the back, but otherwise, it's like looking at practically the same camera. The fact that you only get a 3-inch screen is not really a problem, but it still has the modest 921K dot resolutions of the original A6000 is a bit of a surprise. Worse, this is a 16 to 9 screen, so it's great for videos but not so good for 3 to 2 ratio still photography, where you get a smaller than usual image with black bars on either side. In continuous autofocus, continuous shooting modes, the autofocus responds to changing in subject distance practically instantly. The Sony A6400 didn't have many direct vlogging rivals when it was launched. This leaves the A6400 mildly disappointing. It's a small camera with few external control that hasn't developed physically since the A6000 and relies too heavily on its digital interfaces. The EFE and small rear screen seem especially weak by today's standards. Panasonic Lumix G100 The Lumix G100 is a compact, easy-to-use camera that has approachable buttons and menu layouts. Its simplicity will be a big pull for any vloggers and creative who don't want or need anything which is too complicated. That being said, it still delivers high-quality videos and has desirable features such as a viewfinder should you also want to take stills as well. Plus, it feels like a proper camera with its ergonomic grips. While it can shoot 4K, there is a crop factor, which means you're not making the most of the sensors. The vary angle screens makes it great for recording yourself or footages overhead or from the hips. However, it's worth noting the G100 doesn't have an in-body stabilization, so you might have to invest in one of the best gimbals if you plan on doing a lot handheld shootings. Overall, it's a compact, cute, and quite cheap camera that does the job but lacks a few features. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to hear more from us, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of our new videos.